Hello boys and girls! Today we're going to keep working with quotation marks, but our grammar skill will specifically be using quotation marks for quoting text from a source. So after watching this video, I'm hoping you are able to use commas and quotation marks to mark direct speech and quotations from text. Yesterday we focused on direct speech, Today, we're going to focus on quotations from text. Let's jump on in to the rules that we should apply. Quotation marks are used to show exact words taken from a text, such as a magazine article or maybe any other book that you're reading. We use those articles or books that you're reading and refer to them as a source. And once again, we'll use quotation marks to show the exact words taken from any written source. Let's take a look at this example. In My Librarian is a Camel, Margaret Roos writes, The train serves the homeless children of Bangkok. Now we see here the title of the book is underlined. The author Margaret Roos is identified. So there's the source. And we see quotes around the exact words that she wrote. And the reason why we want to quote her words is so that we don't plagiarize. We want to give her credit for writing this amazing sentence. Another way to write this is to begin with the direct quote from the text. And then cite the source at the end of the sentence. So we could start off with, The train serves the homeless children of Bangkok. Margaret Roos explains in My Librarian is a Camel. So we started off with the direct quote that Margaret Roos wrote in her book, and then we gave her credit at the end, always remembering to surround that direct quote with the quotation marks and identifying the source, which is the book written by Margaret Roos called My Librarian is a Camel. We know that it's a book or an article title because we've underlined it here. We want to make sure that we include the author of the quotation and the source, or where it appeared. So in our previous example, the author was Margaret Roos, and the source in which it appeared is her book titled, My Librarian is a Camel. So we see here in the two examples that we just identified, that My Librarian is a Camel, which is the title of the book, is included in the sentence. And the author, Margaret Roos, is included in the sentence. Once again, we're just identifying who wrote this amazing sentence and where we read it at. Another thing to remember is that we follow all the rules that we learned yesterday for using quotations and punctuations for quoting text. Same stuff. So, when we take a look in the two examples that we just identified, in My Librarian is a Camel, Margaret Roos writes, the train serves the homeless children of Bangkok. We notice that we have a comma separating the source from the actual text that was written or that we read. We have quotation marks around the text that we read in her book. We have a capital letter to begin, and we have a period or a punctuation mark inside of the quotation marks. Very similarly, if we started off with a direct quote, we would make sure that the quotation marks go around the quote we found in the text. We would make sure that we have a capital letter as the first word. We would make sure our comma separates the text that we read from the source and that that comma is inside of the quotation marks. Let's take a look at our thinking questions to help us quote text from a source, whether it be a book you read, a magazine article, or anything else. You first want to ask yourself, what are the exact words? So using our examples above, what are the exact words? In My Librarian is a Camel, Margaret Roos writes, The train serves the homeless children of Bangkok. Another way, the train serves the homeless children of Bangkok, Margaret Roos explains, and my librarian is a camel. Can you identify the exact words that she said?
That's right. The words that she said in her text are, the train serves the homeless children of Bangkok. Well, now that we've identified the words that were found in her text, where does the punctuation belong? Remember, we need periods, we need quotation marks, and even some commas. Can you identify where they go? That's right. Once again, we have the comma separating the text that we read and we're quoting from the source. And we have the quotation marks around the exact words the author said, making sure to include punctuation inside. So let's practice. We're going to rewrite each sentence below with commas and quotation marks. Remember, ask yourself, what are the exact words that the author is saying? And where does the punctuation belong? Here's our very first example. In my librarian is a camel. Miss Ruiz says they can keep their books for up to six weeks. First, ask yourself, what is the exact words that the author is saying? Can you identify that? That's right. The words that the author is saying is, they can keep their books for up to six weeks. Now go ahead and apply your punctuation and capitalization rules to finish editing this sentence. Great job. We have added a comma to separate the source from the words that we read in the source. We added quotation marks before and after the words that are being said in the text. We also made sure to capitalize the very first word of the quote and add the period inside the quotation marks. Let's try another example. The south coast of Finland skirts the Gulf of Finland, says Russ in her article. Can you identify the author's exact words? That's right. The words that the author says are, the south coast of Finland skirts the Gulf of Finland. Now go ahead and apply your punctuation and capitalization rules for quoting text. Are you correct? Did you add quotation marks around what the author wrote? Did you add a capital letter in the beginning? Did you use a comma to separate the text that was written and the source? And did you put a period at the very end? If you did, you're really getting the hang of this. Let's try another example. Kim Becker explains in From Idea to Book, a book begins when an author comes up with an idea for a book. Can you identify the exact words that were written in the text? Wonderful. I'm sure you were able to identify that the words from the text were, a book begins when an author comes up with an idea for a book. All right, so now let's apply our capitalization and punctuation rules to quote this properly. Go ahead, where would you add the quotation marks? Where would you add a capital letter? And where would you add a comma and a period? That's right. We used a comma to separate the source, Kim Becker's book, from idea to book. And we used quotation marks around what Kim Becker said in her book. We also made sure to include a capital letter in the beginning and a period inside the quotes at the end. Are you up for another challenge? Try this one. Authors get ideas in different ways, Becker adds in her article. Hmm, what are the author's exact words? Go ahead and identify them. Wonderful job. The author is saying, authors get ideas in different ways. Now, can we separate this from the source by adding commas, capital letters, and quotation marks? Go right ahead.
I'm sure you did a great job by adding quotation marks around the text that Becker wrote in her article, a capital letter to begin, a comma to separate the text and the source of Becker's article, and a period at the very end. Can't forget that. Now it's your turn. On Google Classroom, you will see this sheet in your grammar slash vocab slides. The direction states, each sentence below quotes text. Edit each of the sentences below by adding correct punctuation, commas, periods, question marks, exclamation points, or quotation marks. Remember, use the same punctuation and capitalization rules that you use for other quotations. The name of the book or the author that the quotation comes from is called the source. Be sure to include the source. Be sure to use the source's exact words. Here's my example, one that we just went over. Kim Becker explains in From Idea to Book, a book begins when an author comes up with an idea for a book. We have the source here, Kim Becker's book From Idea to Book, separated by a comma. Quotation marks here to identify exactly what Kim Becker said in her book. A capital letter to begin and a period inside the quotations at the end. Go ahead and just click in each of these sentences. You don't have to retype them all. Just click in, add your commas, quotation marks, capital letters, whatever you need to properly quote the, this text. Show me what you know.